Everybody can think of some laws they find unreasonable, right? And no wonder. Generally, legislators don't ask us before implementing anything. We don't get to vote on which objects we think should be legal or illegal. And a lot of the times, the reasoning is rather shaky. So let's look at a few prohibitions that I find particularly unreasonable and downright silly. So first off, bala songs or butterfly knives. They are banned in Canada, a few U US states like California, Illinois, and Vermont, Australia, and many, if not most, European countries. Such prohibitions are usually justified on the grounds of public safety concerns. They are seen as having little practical use outside of causing harm. Also prohibited in Canada and many other places are switched blades, aka automatic knives, and gravity knives. So here, concealability and quick opening are usually used as justification. There's also the issue of design and intent. We'll get back to that later. Almost makes you wonder if something is more likely to be banned the cooler it is. But by that logic, these rings would be totally illegal. This video is sponsored by Thorum, which is one of my favorites to promote. This ring right here, the Magni, just looks amazing. Synthetic fire opal, ironwood, and black ceramic. And I also use this one right here, the Osiris, which is tungsten carbide. That's great whenever I'm doing work that's likely to scratch up a ring, because this here is pretty much indestructible. It's extremely hard material. More minimalist, still looks great. Both of these look amazing, and there are so many other materials from fossilized dinosaur bone to meteorite to whiskey barrel and so many other materials in a variety of different styles, all expertly handmade in a small shop in the US. I'd say there's some for just about every taste. Uh, you get a sizer so you can figure out exactly what you need. And if it doesn't fit, you can return it for a different size. There's great customer service. So yeah, highly recommend it. Check them out in the description down below. Okay, so let's think about those justifications. First off, no practical use other than causing harm. That is very debatable and relative. For example, if you look at a bala song, there's nothing about it that would make it impractical for everyday tasks, like opening cardboard boxes, cutting rope. There are a number of legit utility functions in everyday life. And I've heard so many times from people who carry knives that somebody needed one to cut something, and that person you know, brought out their knife and offered it to the person in need of a sharp object. And the, the reaction was, why do you carry a knife? Why don't you? You clearly need one. So in case of a balisong, there's absolutely nothing that prohibits such everyday use. There are a variety of different blade shapes that can be used with this sort of design. It's really simply a different method of locking the blade in place, of you know folding it open and locking it. And it's also one of the most secure lockups, by the way. One thing I almost forgot to mention, this is anecdotal evidence because I'm not able to find statistics of violent crime by type of weapon used, but I remember back in my day, there was no rampant ninja crime. People weren't getting bludgeoned by nunchucks in large numbers or stabbed by balasongs at every corner. The 80s and 90s were more violent statistically, but not specifically because of these objects. Sometimes it's pointed out that gang members used to carry nunchucks and balasongs and switchblades and all of that. Well, you know what else gang members tend to carry? Illegal guns. They also tend to have illegal drugs and other things that break the law, regardless of what the law is. So what's the point exactly? Especially when you look at automatic knives, there's really no relevant practical difference to other types of folding knives. They can have the exact same blade shape. The difference is simply that with an automatic knife, you press a button on the handle and it automatically opens like that. You can easily have an automatic knife with a utility style blade shape. And then we have the argument of speed, accessibility. So if you get into a heated argument or a fist fight at a bar or who knows where, and you have one of those, you can draw it and boom, it's immediately accessible. And it's somehow more dangerous 
than a regular folding knife. How slow is that really? Right? Reach for it, open it. Like it might be half a second slower than reach for it, press a button, and it opens. Plus, it gets even sillier when you take a closer look at how this works. In many places, centrifugal knives are prohibited, like a balisong, and typically also knives fall under that category, or may fall under that category, that can be flicked open with a gesture. So you just hold on to it and you, you do this and it opens. This one doesn't do that, so it's perfectly fine. There are some knives where if you <clears throat> flick them hard enough, they will open. Okay, doesn't happen here. But if I put my finger right here in either the thumb hole or in a thumb stud, and I help it out a little bit, now it opens. That doesn't change the legality of it at all. This is still perfectly legal because it's not centrifugal or gravity or anything. But if I help it out, it's the same kind of speed. And you can do that with just about any folding knife, right? If it has a thumb stud or anything, typically you can help it out a little bit like that. 100% legal. What's the difference? Also, you know what's even faster? A fixed blade. And this is a paring knife. This is completely harmless, according to the law. And this, you don't even have to mess with it. You don't have to open it. It's already there. You can have a sheath on your person, draw it, it's there, boom, done, right? So in that case, concealability comes in. You can have basically the same blade length and very similar overall length in a smaller package because it folds. But concealability is also largely a matter of attire rather than object design. For example, did you know that I've been carrying a hammer this entire time? And a pretty long, hefty one at that. It's not that difficult. And this is arguably more dangerous than that. I mean, it's debatable, but either way, it's at least, it rivals that at the very least. And even funnier, you know what I also have on me right now that you're not aware of? This. <laughs> Basically a pocket machete. And uh, this, you know, is two-handed use, two-handed opening. You can't just go so much less dangerous. Man, if this had a button, to open immediately? Can you imagine how much more dangerous this would be compared to that? The next silly prohibition is throwing stars, AKA ninja stars, AKA shuriken. Those, just like balisongs, are prohibited in many countries and a few US states. Interestingly, although these were banned in Indiana in 1985, Again, ninja movies. A bill was recently approved that would allow for recreational use of throwing stars at businesses you know, that have throwing lanes with safety measures. There's a Canadian channel making videos about legal issues like this called Runkle of the Bailey, who made one video about a very interesting court case involving homemade uh, shuriken quote unquote, those were really just nails taped together uh, with the nails radiating outward. So in a very technical way, the prohibition, the way it's worded, sort of applies to those. That's how that person ended up in court. However, the judge in this case used a surprising amount of common sense. I say surprising because I have a rather cynical view of judges and lawyers. Uh, no offense to you if you happen to be one. That's just my personal bias. Of course, there are good ones and bad ones, like always, human beings, all of that, blah, blah. So either way, the judge here made some really good points. Said that it must be a weapon, uh, not an everyday item like a circular saw, which could strictly fall under the description, under the way the prohibition is worded. It must be rigid, whereas taped together nails are somewhat floppy. And the, the points need to have edges sharp enough to 
cut human flesh. The judge also observed that this law's ability to protect citizens from harm is illusory rather than real, which is 100% accurate, and even pointed out that inanimate objects lack volition. Also that they are less inherently dangerous than many legally owned animals, as well as certain chemicals that are inherently dangerous, even something as mundane as gasoline, has a certain inherent danger that doesn't require ill intent to cause harm. Also that throwing stars are no more dangerous than many small, rigid, pointed objects used in everyday life that are perfectly legal. Again, circular saw blades, hatchets, machetes, crowbars, hammers. The judge also pointed to cars, arguing that they're more dangerous and cause much more real-life harm. Now, the response to that is generally, yeah, but cars are needed for legitimate everyday use. Again, I'll get back to design and intent later. Generally, throwing stars may of course be dangerous if hurled at someone, but not lethal generally. There are a few videos testing them out on uh, hand analogs, and it's not even that easy to get them to stick to begin with, but even if you manage, they're not very long. Like, yes, it'll be extremely painful, it could put out an eye, things like that, but they wouldn't even penetrate far enough into the skull to cause sufficient damage to the brain. That's, again, a movie trope that doesn't really work that way. But you know what can absolutely cause lethal damage when thrown at somebody? Axes. And throwing axes are 100% legal. Here's a great common sense summary of this law. The bad won't obey it, and the good don't need it. Now, in fairness, criminals won't obey the law is not a flawless argument. It makes some sense, but the problem is by that logic you might as well get rid of all laws because criminals won't obey them, and there are most definitely certain laws that, yes, should be in place. Like, for example, <laughs> it's illegal to murder people. You can argue, well, criminals won't obey that. They'll murder somebody anyway, so why do we need that law? So we can convict people who do that. However, these weapon prohibitions are superfluous, especially in Canada, because the law already treats any object that's being used to assault another person as a weapon. Meaning, this, if somebody hits another person over the head with this, this hammer, which is normally a legitimate everyday tool, becomes a weapon in the eye of the law in the same way as a table leg would become a weapon. A car would become a weapon if used to assault somebody else by Canadian law. So why do we need this? Why do we need to prohibit knives that open two milliseconds faster? Or knives that open when you point them at the floor? They just fall out? Also pointed out by the judge in this case, Laws cannot prevent the easy availability of items like this. You can make shuriken, which is something that applies the same way to the final prohibited item I want to talk about, the nunchaku. Nunchucks, again, are prohibited in many different places, and this is really, really silly, because they're really just two sticks connected by a length of rope or chain. As a kid, in the late 80s, early 90s, I made these before they were prohibited. Speaking of easily made, the final object I have on my person is this, a copper dagger. Homemade, right? This is not too hard to carry on you. Copper, of course, is not as effective as steel, but guess what? If you jam this into someone's soft, fleshy parts, it'll do a lot of damage. And uh, it's not like steel is, is hard to come by. In case of both nunchucks and balasongs, you also typically have the argument of self-harm. You know, people are being stupid, they try to do tricks with them, and they, they knock themselves on the head with nunchucks, or cut themselves with balasongs, or, or whatever, that's why they're prohibited. But the problem with this reasoning is that it applies to way too many things. If you want to ban ballast songs or nunchucks because people hurt themselves with them, then you also got to ban skateboards, inline skates, you got to ban skydiving, extreme sports, martial arts, 
et cetera, et cetera. You would end up in a nightmarish, dystopian, oppressive nanny state where you can't do anything because there's a certain risk involved and the authorities know best and need to decide what you do with your own body. So in other words, also say goodbye to all drugs and alcohol and high fat, high cholesterol foods, etc. Et there's so many things that just forget it. This is not reasonable. Let people decide for themselves. You can absolutely put an age restriction on things, but prohibiting nunchucks does absolutely no significant good. And it restricts people's freedom for really no benefit in return. Okay, so finally, design and intent, scary things. So the difference between a saw blade and a throwing star is that one is designed for peaceful use, the other for violent use. If we look at the historical origin, that is, and that's the problem. If you, if you argue that something should be prohibited because it was originally invented to cause harm, we clearly don't go by that with a lot of things. For example, bows were originally invented, designed to kill. We've decided that these things are fine because they're used for either causing harm in, an, in a socially approved way, i.e. hunting, or they're used for sports and recreation in an approved way. So why, what's the difference? What's the difference between a bow and throwing stars? The bow is capable of more serious harm, more serious damage than the throwing stars. Both were designed to cause damage to living bodies, but one is arbitrarily acceptable and the other is not. Why? Same thing with throwing axes. You know what we've also arbitrarily decided is acceptable and legal, even though it was designed to injure and kill, historically? Swords. <laughs> Swords are legal almost everywhere. There are a few places that put some restrictions on them, but this is 100% legal to own. How's this more dangerous than a puny little knife that opens automatically when I press a button? Again, concealability, sure. Obviously this is not as concealable as a folding knife, but with a long coat you still could. The thing is, this is legal to own. What should be illegal should be assaulting another person with an object. Again, by Canadian law, any object that you assault somebody else with becomes a weapon, technically. And you can easily allow the possession of automatic knives, ballast songs, etc., etc., but prohibit the wearing, you know, carrying them outside. Why isn't it like that? Because laws are silly, at least some of them. These certainly are. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting and informative. Maybe if you were in favor of such prohibitions, hopefully you will consider these arguments and perhaps be swayed by them. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Um, thanks for watching and have a good one. Stay safe. I do not encourage violence with anything, either weapons or tools or barehanded or whatever. Treat other people well. All right? Take care.